Welcome back, everyone. It's the Bourbon Judge. Hey, we're back at it again. Today, we are going to do a trifecta, baby. A trifecta. Oh, man. Three bourbons, so... <laughs> I'm ready to have a little bit of fun. Hopefully you guys and gals are too. All right, so today we're gonna go ahead and check out Starlight Distillery. And I will put the link up above. Uh, I reviewed Starlight Distillery before, so I'll put the link up above so you guys can see that one. I went in depth with like the history of Starlight Distillery, um, all the cool facts. So I'm gonna try to keep this one a little bit more high level. But Cliff Notes version of just Starlight Distillery as a whole, they are based out in Indiana. They are a true end-to-end -end distillery, meaning they are farmers. That's like truly who they are to their core. They've been farming for hundreds of years. So they're farmers, so all of the everything that goes into the bourbon, to the mash bill, their corn, uh, rye, I mean, everything that goes into the mash bill, they're distilling it there, they're aging it there, they're bottling it all there on site in Indiana. Yes, Indiana. And no, again, they are not a part of MGP. <laughs> I just like to try to make sure everyone's clear of that. I think everyone in the bourbon world, here's, uh, here's Indiana, and the first thing people think of is MGP. No, they are actually just Starlight Distillery making some damn good bourbon. So uh, Starlight Distillery was kind enough to send me three samples. Of, we have their Bottled and Bond. We have a wine finish, a Spanish wine finish. This is the Vino de Naranja. I may have uh, killed that name, but I, I apologize. I didn't do well in Spanish in, uh, in high school or middle school. And then last but not least, we have the honey finish. So these are three, um, actually like 375 milliliter sample bottles. Uh, but I will, of course, obviously share with you guys the exactly what the, the full bottle does look like. So we got three different uh, samples to get into today. Let's have some fun. All right. Let's go ahead and dive into, uh, let's call it the first, like the, the, the traditional Carl T. Huber bottled and bond. So. I'm gonna pour, I'd pour this real quick. When you think of bottled and bond, of course, obviously it comes in at exactly 100 proof. It's aged at least four years. For this sample that they provided, it's actually aged four and a half years, um, always in a government controlled warehouse, and it follows all the other traditional bottled and bond um, rules, if you will. All right, so aged four years. So Bourbon Judge, tell me about this one. How much is it? How hard is it to find? Where am I gonna find it? All that good stuff. So the actual bottle, the full size bottle, again, this is just a sample, the actual bottle of uh, Bottled and Bond Starlight, you will find it, I've seen it across, oh my gosh, where I live, I've seen it in Delaware, New Jersey, Maryland, you know, the price is going to vary, but for the most part, it's about a $50 bottle. The going average price for a standard, really good Bottled and Bond product is about 50 bucks, which is what this one would cost you as well. I've seen it across a couple of different states. Now I will say on the East Coast, I do have to do a bit more, let's call it, going to more stores to find the Bottled and Bond version. The small batch, even the sherry, I can find a little bit easier, but the Bottled and Bond, I've seen it in a few places. Now, I will say, if you live out in the Midwest or maybe a core market where Starlight um, does a lot of their distribution to, you might have an easier, find, easier time finding it. One last key thing, you guys all know the use of technology. So if you can't find it locally, you can do two things. And I promise you, these do work. Number one, make sure you reach out to your local liquor store owner and say, hey, Bob, Susie, John, Jill, whomever their name, whatever their name is, <laughs> I want Starlight products. I've done that a few times, not just for Starlight, but for other products. And I'll tell you, as long as you have a really good relationship with the store manager and or owner, they will get the products in for you. So that's one thing. But the second thing, if you're having a hard time finding this bottled and bond, you can always just go online. I've seen it before. This one and other finishes at like Sealbox and other online uh, bourbon retailers or whiskey retailers. All right. Enough with that. Let's go ahead and get into the bourbon itself. So color standpoint. Again, not bad, very nice. It's like a, a golden brown. Very night, nice and light and crisp. Like a very, uh, uh, it's kind of like a um, like a lighter walnut brown, if you will. Maybe even almost like a golden brown, if you will. All right, not bad. Skin to the nose. All right, so $50 bourbon, 100 proof. Mm, I always like trying new bottled and bond products because it's, you know, it's nice to kind of change it up a little bit, right? I mean, we all know the standard bottle and bond products that are out there. A lot of other major distilleries in Kentucky and even some other places as well. 
this is one we're really interested in trying the bottle Nibon as well as these other cool finishes, the wine and the honey. And let's just see how good is it? Is it worth hunting? Does it live up to the hype that I've kind of shared before? I've heard a lot of good things. So, hey, I say this each and every week. You guys know me. I mean it, honestly, from me to you. Thank you for all the love and support of the Bourbon Judge. I appreciate everyone out there. Cheers to you. Wow. Ooh. All right. That has a, um, for a hundred proof, a nice little kick to it. Let me get a little bit more before I get into the, to like everything. So I will say though, from the nose, wow. This has like a certain, um, je ne sais quoi about it. It's something different about this one in the nose. It has a bit more than what I expected. A bit more pepper. It's like very spicy in the nose. Almost like spicy with like um, some golden apples. Some apples and some honey kind of folded in. So I get spice, like a peppery. Um, peppery, a little bit of uh, like some mint. Some apples and some honey. All together with a little bit of caramel as well in the nose. Wow, that's actually really nice. It's completely different than like, honestly, like a 1792 bottle in the bond completely different no like bananas this is completely different this is like a league of its own like in a certain category which is which is cool mm. all right mm, all right starlight <laughs> mm. wow that is very interesting i'm gonna hold back everything in terms of my judgment for all these until the end I'm gonna hold off. I know typically I do not have a good poker face, but I'm gonna hold off and give you every single thing at the end. I will say though, just to kind of close this out for now, and I'll come back to it. Everything from the nose transferred to the palate. Tons of pepper, a little bit of mint mixed in there, some vanilla, some caramel, and that honey all kind of combined together. And this is not the honey finish. This again is the bottled and bond, but it worked very well. It's its own traditional um, bottle and bond. I like it because it has its own category, but I'm going to hold it again, like whether or not if I really like it or if I'm like just eh, eh, so, so like it until the end. Very, very cool though. Let me go ahead and just cleanse the palate real quick. Mm. All right. So now we are going over to the wine finish. <laughs> All right. Now this one straight up, I have not seen locally. Uh, I've seen some of their wine, I'm sorry, some of their finishes locally, uh, but not this actual finish here. So this is the uh, Vino de Naraja. Again, I know I just killed that name, so I apologize. But what does that even mean, Bourbon Judge? So this is a Spanish wine finished bourbon. So essentially the Spanish wine is essentially what happens is this is a white wine, a white Spanish wine that is then finished with orange peel. So it's almost kind of creating like an orange wine finish or an orange it is an orange wine as a whole so it's definitely going to probably create some very unique flavors in this nose as well as in this palette let me go ahead and pour this one ah, all right so what are we talking price wise so msrp for this one when i've looked up like different stores and i've talked to some different friends like across like the uh across the u.s that have actually purchased this before for the most part this retails about 75 dollars this is about 75 dollars um, some of my friends across the U.S. have found this as local store picks, right, locally, um, and or, of course, at the distillery as well. Again, a lot of times you can get a lot of these, like, specialty finishes uh, also online, again, at Sealbox. So, you know, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to find it by me locally, but hopefully as Starlight starts to kind of expand across the U.S., I'll see more than just the traditional. I've seen locally, by, by me personally, the rye, the bottled and bond, the small batch, uh, and I've even seen the honey before, but I didn't buy the honey because that was before my good friend Blake put me on to Starlight. So I didn't know what I was uh, kind of missing out on, but now I know I will never miss a uh, <laughs> another cash finish from Starlight. <laughs> Trust me. But again, this is a Vino de Naranja. All right. So from an age standpoint, this one, actually both of these, I'll say just kind of cover them both. They're both in that four to six year range, right? because this is a blend of barrel proof 
bourbons that were then finished in either a honey or in this case the Spanish wine. They were a blend of barrel proof bourbons and so on an age range it's about four to six years and they're both about 110 proof as well. So they're both about 110 proof. The cool thing is that this, this bourbon after it uh, leaves like the standard barrel that has been aging in for four to six years, it then ages for about three to six months in the Spanish wine barrel. So that's what kind of gives it like hopefully like some unique flavor uh, and from a nose, palate and finish standpoint. So let's go ahead and get into this one real quick. All right. Hmm, this is interesting. So I would have thought in the nose, this would have been extremely strong and just like kicking out notes of like just very orange forward and so forth. But I actually get a lot more traditional bourbon notes from this. I get more caramel, a bit more even brown sugar in this one. I do get some pepper, but more caramel, brown sugar. I do, I do get that wine and that orange peel is there in the nose but it's not like overpowering, right? You know sometimes like with some bourbons that are finished in, in like a wine or a honey or whatever the specialty wine cast finish that might be, they're just super overpowering. This one is actually kind of nice and elegant actually. It's not bad, it's not bad at all from the nose. And look at that color, very nice and dark. I like that. This is like a deep walnut, almost like a mahogany technically. This is extremely dark, all right, wow. Vino de Naranga. I, I just said that again. <laughs> and I know I messed it up. <laughs> I love it. Not bad. All right. Hey, do me three favors real quick before we move on. Number one, hit the like button. Number two, drop me a comment. You guys know I love going back and forth. I love having a blast. Try to reply to every single comment if possible. And last but not least, please make sure you also hit the subscribe button. So whenever I publish content, you have a chance to uh, get the notification. Cheers, everybody. I gotta stop banging these glasses this hard. They're gonna break some one day. Mmm. <laughs> wow. Woo! That has some heat on it. The viscosity. This is very thick. Wow. This had a very Wow, this almost brings me to tears. This is a, a very strong and long finish. To be about 110 proof, granted, I know it's a barrel proof. I would have thought two things. Number one, I would have thought that Spanish sweet wine, that Spanish like orange wine would have been, would have almost made it a bit softer. This is 110 proof bourbon, uh, uh, about right, because it's a blend about 110 proof. It sips closer to like 120. Not bad. <laughs> I do like that a lot. And the orange pill, everything from the nose transferred to the palate. The orange pill, it stayed. I sensed it in the nose. It was there in the palate, but it's not overwhelming. I thought it would have been like almost, to be very honest with you, I thought it might have been too sweet, right? I love sweets, but let's keep my sweets to like dessert, right? Desserts that I'm eating. I thought this would have been way more sweet in the palate. It wasn't actually. All the bourbon notes are still there, which is actually pretty darn cool. The caramel, the vanilla, uh, the spice, right? A little bit of peppery in there as well. And the orange peel is there, but it's kind of like it's here. It's like almost on the bottom of the palate the entire time, right? As it's transferring from like kind of just moving around in my mouth to like the finish, it's still there on the bottom. Like it lets you know it's there, but it's not overpowering. It's not over overly sweet. That would actually go very well with a cigar, especially on a cold fall night. Not bad. I gotta finish this, I know. It's just too damn good to leave in the glass. <laughs> I gotta finish it. <clears throat> mm. Wow. Wow. I've never had this finish before. I've, I mean, we've all had ports, um, cab, cabernet, wine finish, and other, other versions of different you know wine finishes. I've never had this one before. That is pretty damn special. I couldn't even hold back. Wow. That's really good. <laughs> that is pretty darn good. Let me just cleanse my palate before we move over to honey. Mm. 
All right. And I'm going to do you guys a favor too also. Not a favor, but I'm going to give you guys one thing. At the end, I'll kind of go through them. Again, a quick recap. I'm going to rank them also. Not in terms of like, you know, like, you know, the worst to the, like, the best. Um, I'm going to rank them in order of which one, if I was grabbing them off the shelf, which one would I go to first, first, second, first, third. Is that cool? All right. All right. Now, let's go to the honey. Now, I will say, when I got this little shipment in the mail, thank you again, Starlight. This is the one where I just had to go ahead, break that seal, A, try it, and B, try it with a cigar. <laughs> and uh, so I've already dived into this one, but uh, we're going to go into it a little bit just to see whether or not if uh, maybe if things have changed just, you know, since I got this package. So again, with this one, they're using their barrel proof bourbon age about four to six years right because they're blending cast strength bourbons from uh, multiple different barrels so the age is roughly four to six years the proof is about 110 you'll notice that most of the starlight barrel proof versions that they have their cast finishes so not bottled and bond obviously that's always 100 but most of their cast strength bourbons um like the one i have the uh, sherry finish they're always anywhere from like 108 to 113 on average about 110 proof and for the most part because they are a newer distillery not farmers that they've been farming for hundreds of years but because they are a newer distillery in the last five ten years most of their bourbons that they're they're putting out are anywhere from four to six years as time goes on obviously they'll probably will release some six seven eight ten fifteen year age statements but for now the majority of their cast strength actually most of their bourbons they're putting out are four to six years but what's cool about this one is that because again they are farmers they're taking their barrel proof bourbon and then they're dumping it. They're then doing something else really cool because when you think of Starlight, they are farmers. They actually have on their property three to four tractor trailers of uh, beehives just sitting there. So what do they do with all the beehives? Obviously they take all that honey, they give it to their bottlers, right? Actually they give it to their, their, their let's call it their honey division, if you will. They also give them their empty uh, previously used bourbon barrels, right? What do you do with all that, right? They actually take their honey and dump it into their previously used bourbon barrels. So their honey is aging in X used bourbon barrels. I love that by itself because I love honey and why not honey uh, that's aging in bourbon barrels? I love that by itself. They take all that honey, they dump it out of the bourbon barrels, they bottle it and they sell it locally actually on their farm, which is great. Now you have all these ex bourbon barrels that now also have you know ex honey it had honey in there what do you do with it then so then they take all that bourbon they place it back into those barrels that just had honey in it it ages for an additional three to six months just like this one ages for three to six months in those ex honey used barrels and then they obviously bottle it for you and i I've seen this in stores. I again, this is back before I was really kind of onto Starlight as a whole. I missed it. It sold out super quick. So if you see this in a store, let's just see how good it is. I'll hold on one second. <laughs> All right, let's get into this nose, folks. Hold on. All right. Mm. All right. So again, $75 bottle. It's going to vary, obviously, by in terms of like where you live, right? I've seen it for about $75 by me. By you, it might be $70, it might be $80 or $85. It depends on your store, obviously. We all have different, you know, taxes and so forth. But as a general rule of thumb, about $75. All right. Mm. Now, what's interesting about this, which is pretty cool, it's not super sweet on the nose. The nose is way more well balanced. It kind of reminds me of the nose of this one here, the Bottled and Bond. A bit more peppery. Some apples. You do get the honey from the uh, from the nose as well, but also kind of like this one, it's not overpowering, right? Like I know it's finished obviously in a honey barrel, but it's not overpowering, which is great by itself. All right. Color wise, not as dark as the wine finish. Kind of similar again to the bottle and bond, but hey, cheers everybody. Appreciate you all. Mm. <laughs> oh man. Oh my goodness. 
Oh gosh, let me, let me just get a little bit more. Mm. Wow. All right. Oh man, that's a tough one. So, similar to this one, everything from the nose, transfer to the palate. What I like about both of these, but I'm speaking about this one in particular, you definitely in the nose you get the honey but it's not overpowering right you get more of like the pepper more of like the honey um and the traditional caramel notes but the 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 honey is there right all the way through you also get like the apple on the nose what i like about that one is that everything transferred to the palate you get the traditional notes it's a long finish it's not as long as this one i will say though the finish is long and solid and it eventually kind of drops off it's, but that probably makes sense too because this is also finished in a honey barrel so that sweetness probably eventually kind of just fades away a little bit more than this one that actually sips more like 120 maybe even 125 proof this definitely sips like a traditional 110 proof bourbon that is pretty darn good <laughs> and that absolutely as you can tell goes very well with the cigar in fact it went very well with uh a really good cigar by the way <laughs> all right so overall first and foremost I have to use a gavel all three of these straight up are absolutely hands down every day all day a buy the bottled and bond the wine finish and the honey finish straight up are buys all day long but I'm gonna go ahead and rank them for you right so if I'm at the, you know, I'm sitting in my local shop, I see all three, maybe I have a fixed budget, which one am I buying first, second, and third? And what's the reason why? Woo! Oh my gosh. They're all really good. They're all home runs. All right. Damn. All right. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got to keep it real. Number one, and this is almost hands down. If I'm at a store and I see one of their specialty finished bourbons, by chance, I see the Vino de Naraja. Hopefully I got that right again, or I murdered it again. <laughs> this might be, oh my gosh, truly one of the best bourbons I've had in a long time. One that I've had, I didn't even know about that they even had this, honestly, this specialty cast finish. This is absolutely amazing. Honestly, amazing. It was a surprise. Going into it, before I even received the package, I would have thought it would have been the, uh, the actual honey. This one was in a league of its own by far. Now, you ask, Bourbon Judge, what second was the third? This is tough because while I love the honey finish, this bottle and bomb is actually pretty damn good. I mean, for a standard bottle and bond, no specialty finish, this is pretty solid. All right, I'm going to do this. Oh, man, I got to give one. Gosh. All right, here we go. I'm going to give the silver to the honey finish and the bronze to the bottle and bond. But honestly, I, I only did that because I wanted to do a true second and third place. But in all actuality, these are almost equal. They really are. This is a, I mean, folks, I'm telling you, I know everyone out there loves your big bad boys, your Heaven Hills, your Buffalo Trace. You are sleeping. And I mean, you are sleeping. Please wake up. Please wake up. Starlight Distillery is producing some fantastic bourbon. I love the, the, uh, the sherry finish that I have. Um, the small batch is really good as well. The double oaked is good. This bottle and bond is pretty darn special by itself. It holds its own compared to uh, this honey finish. And I love a honey finished bourbon. I mean, the Bell Mead, I love that as well. This is pretty darn good. But this for a bottled and bond, <laughs> I'm telling you, this won't be around for long in the bourbon judge household. Let's just say that. Hey. Peace. Cheers. I appreciate all of you out there. Thank you for always watching The Bourbon Judge. Peace.